And new tonight, six amendments sit on the ballot for voters. The League of Women Voters of the Lower Cape Fear came together to try and educate voters there. Our Andrew James joins us now in studio with the brief breakdown of what it all means. It's a big story at 11. Well, Amanda, it's no secret getting voters to turn out in a midterm election year is not easy. 2014 was the highest turnout in 12 years, and that was at less than 45 percent. Maybe that's the reason so many amendments sit on the ballot. Well, we talked to women voters who say the changes are just plain confusing. Early voting underway in North Carolina and half a dozen changes voters could make to our state constitution. I don't feel that there's been an adequate explanation about what those amendments mean and how important they are. That's why Gail Bromley and the Lower Cape Fear League of Women Voters brought these women together. And the descriptors that are on the ballot are not helping the voter make an informed decision. Now you can go to the State Board of Elections website to see a detailed layout of each amendment. But there are six, one a symbolic sign of support for hunting and fishing statewide, another called Marcy's Law to empower victims of crimes. Next is a cap on the state income tax from 10 down to 7 percent, although the tax currently sits at 5.5 percent and is lowering. Then one that would require photo IDs for in-person voting. The league is against that amendment. We think that disenfranchises voters and voter fraud is a non-existent problem. It's something, though, Republican voters want addressed. And I think it would just prevent a lot of fraudulent voting. And it's not a question of people not having access to IDs because they're going to be provided to people who can't afford them. The final two are the ones that have struck a political core. Lawmakers want the power to select judges for the governor to appoint when vacancies open up in non-election years. And they want to cut down the bipartisan board of elections and ethics, down from nine to eight members to keep it an even four GOP and four Democrats. Pinter County GOP Chair Norm Godspel supports the judicial nomination changes. I think it's a simple process, similar to you know the Supreme Court justice. The president has a nominee and then it has to be vetted. We're just doing it in reverse. Now the League of Women Voters is against those final two amendments, saying that for the judicial nominations, that would they think put in question the checks and balances of government. That's also a similar stance Governor Roy Cooper has taken, as well as former state governors, against that amendment. Amanda.